technically I already covered what was going on in the year 1841 in the last video with William Henry Harrison and John Tyler also becomes president in 1841 so instead we'll talk about 1842. Imagine it. The year is 1842. British and Indian troops leave Kabul on a mission towards India and are massacred before they get there. An assassination attempt has been attempted on the life of Queen Victoria. Great Britain and China signed a treaty of Nanking to end the Opium War. Karl Marx ascends to editor-in-chief in a newspaper and a king in Belgium proclaims child labor laws. There is a train in Versailles that runs to Paris and it goes up in flames killing 50 people. And speaking of fire, um, there is a fire that goes on in Hamburg, Germany that lasts for a hundred hours. 500 Mexican troops go and invade San Antonio. And the emperor in Ethiopia goes and defeats a warlord. Stateside, the first postage stamp comes out in New York City and the first sewing machine is patented in Washington, D.C. The first child labor laws are passed in Massachusetts and the second Seminole War is declared. Mount St. Helens erupts. The University of Notre Dame is founded. Explorer John C. Fremont goes upon and explores the Oregon Trail. The New York Philharmonic plays its very first concert, and the U.S. recognizes the independence of Hawaii. More on that to come later. And finally, the first president to succeed to the presidency following the death of the president is inaugurated. The slogan for Harrison when he was running for president is Tippecanoe and Tyler too. Tyler. Uh, but all too quickly, it was from two to only as uh, Tyler was actually, John Tyler was picked as the running mate for Harrison because he was a southerner and uh, the Whigs thought this would be great because Harrison was from Indiana and it was kind of like a mesh of the North and the South. The idea is it was create support from the South uh, in this new presidency. As we'll see with future VP picks, there wasn't a whole lot of forethought going into picking John Tyler as a running mate. No one had any idea that Harrison would be so anti-coat. It didn't take long, though, for the Whigs to start questioning whether they had made a good decision or not. It wasn't long before also that um, Tyler decided that he kind of understood where Jackson, yes, Jackson again, was coming from when he was anti-national banks. And Henry Clay, as we've talked about before, was not a fan of his anti-ism towards the banks. Remember how I said that Harrison was dedicated to following through the will of the people through Congress? Well, Tyler wasn't exactly on that vibe. He started vetoing things much uh, similarly to uh, Jackson. So uh, let's just say Henry Clay was not a fan of Tyler. After the second time that Tyler uh, vetoed a national bank bill, uh, his entire cabinet resigned, except for Daniel Webster, who was the Secretary of State, although he eventually left the, the post, and Calhoun, whom we've talked about before also, uh, became Secretary of State, but that's, that's not yet. The point is, the entire cabinet, minus one, resigned. So what did Tyler do? Well, remember how I talked about he was a Southerner? Uh, he replaced his cabinet with conservative Southerners, and that's going to come into play a lot uh, later. Then he vetoes a bill about tariffs, 
and that's that's what pushed it too far. Tyler then became the first president to have impeachment resolutions drawn up against him. The investigative committee looking into the legality of all the facts was led by John Quincy Adams, former president, and it was uh, concluded that he did in fact view, abuse the veto power, although he did uh, keep his office. To be fair, so far it sounds like Tyler's a pretty uh, negative Nancy, but funny enough, he was the first president to get married while president. His first wife was the first wife to pass away while being a first wife in the White House. Um, and so a couple of years later, he remarried to a woman who was 30 years younger than him. It was quite the scandal. But uh, he definitely decided to have a little happiness because he started approving bills, uh, such as the log cabin bill, which enabled settlers to be, get first dibs on about 160 acres of land. He passed a tariff that protected northern manufacturers, and he helped uh, oversee the treaty that resolved a border issue with Canada. And naturally, by 1845, the Texas land had finally been annexed. However, that is going to bite the next president a little bit. More on that in the next video. Tyler was such a proponent for states' rights that that was his main reasoning behind vetoing so much. But his stance created a deeper divide between everyone in the United States. Uh, as you know, this is a period of time where the hot topic button was slavery. When state, with states coming into the Union and uh, a lot riding on whether they are not or are a slave state, uh, this Southerner, who was never expected to be president, re remember, he replaced his entire cabinet with conservative Southerners. Um, these Southerners were uh, committed to keeping the institution of slavery alive. Uh, so that puts an interesting take on where we are politically. Remember, the Whig Party is pretty much gone at this point. Uh, it's definitely not in the White House, and uh, even though Harrison was a Whig. Uh, but what we are going to have here is these conservatives are going to leave the White House and go into the Democratic Party. The crack that Tyler is creating here is going to be what leads to the Civil War. Ultimately, John Tyler is a one-term president, and after he leaves his presidency, he goes later on to help build the uh, Southern Confederacy, and he dies as a member of the Southern Confederacy. So as you can see, things are getting a little heated in terms of conflict going on right now. Stay tuned for our next video on James Polk.